Hi there Mercedes owners, today in your 2017 Mercedes GLS 450, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Takancha's ZCI 4 pole flat trailer connector wiring system. And this is what our harness looks like when it's installed. It is designed to live inside the vehicle, so when you use it, you simply pinch it between the lift gate here at the back and it will drape down and then you'll hook up to your trailer and head on your way. Our four pole connector here is going to provide us with all of our necessary lighting signals, which includes our left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps and brake lamps, which will keep us DOT compliant in all states. Another thing I like about this harness is that it does have an integrated module on it that when installed in here will monitor all your tail light signals. With the ZCI, you don't actually splice into any of the wiring. It uses inductive clamps to monitor when a signal is being sent down the wire. Once it sees a signal on that wire, that module will then reproduce the signal and send it out our four pole connector here, providing our lights. The module does have its own dedicated power wire that you need to run, but I like that it has that dedicated wire and doesn't tap into any of our lights because there's zero chance that any fault on our trailer is gonna affect the operation of our vehicle. If there's any faults on the trailer, the module would shut down the offended circuit if it could in time, and if it's unable to shut that circuit down, the fuse for the dedicated power wire to our module would open. You could then repair your trailer, replace the fuse, and be back up and running again. If the fuse does blow with the ZCI, you will need to do the relearn procedure, um, which is the same as the learn procedure that we're gonna do once we get it installed. So now that we've talked about it a little bit, let's go ahead and get into the installation. We'll begin our installation here at the back of the vehicle. We're going to be tapping into both the passenger and driver's side light assemblies, but we're going to do it behind uh, the lights, so that way we don't have to remove the lights. All of our wiring components are going to stay in the interior of the vehicle, so there'll be nothing external that's going to extend the life of our components by keeping it protected here on the inside. The side pieces here, we can just pull those up and get those out of the way. So you just pull out on these. I actually prefer to use a little kind of a hook there. You can give yourself a little bit of a hand. That'll pull out, and then you'll just simply pull up. Sometimes you gotta lift this little piece up here to get it to release. So we'll set that aside. We're gonna do the same thing here on the other side. Might have to pull up on this to get it all the way to release. Now that we've got both of those side panels out, we're gonna remove this threshold here at the back so we can run our wires across from side to side and hide those. So we'll lift up on this. This piece here, the adhesive just a little worn off, so just ignore that. That'll hook up there. That'll kind of help hold that out of our way. And then this cross panel here has two fasteners that are holding it in place that we'll need to remove. We're going to use a T30 Torx to remove them. They're quite recessed, so it does make it a little hard to see lining up your tools. And it also makes it a little difficult to get them to remove because even when they're fully released, they're still kind of in their recessed hole. So you may or may not need a magnet. Looks like we're going to need a little magnet here or something to pull that out of there. Once both of the fasteners are removed, we can start to peel this up. It's just push pins that kind of hold it in going across. So we're gonna start on the edge, pop it up, and then we're just gonna work our way down. We don't wanna pull up too hard at any point because we're trying to pull where the pins are. There we go. Got them all released. We'll just lift up and then we can set this piece aside. So that'll give us an easy way to be able to route our wiring across here and hide it. So we can go ahead and I'm just gonna lower this down for now. We'll lift it up as necessary when we're routing our wire. And we can go ahead and grab our harness now. We're gonna start separating, separating out all of our connector ends because you can see they are gonna be labeled. So this one says right turn. Well, that's gonna be the passenger side. This one here is labeled stop, tail. Here we have left turn. So we're just gonna organize them. We'll get out most of them are gonna go on the driver's side over here, and we're just gonna have that one that's gonna go over there to that side. So it looks like we've got it pretty well separated. We'll just get all of our uh, rubber bands and stuff off of there so we can start to utilize our wiring now. So now that we've got most of the stuff out of the way, we've got our stuff here. We're gonna go in here, this wiring that you see here where it pokes through this grommet, that goes to our tail light. So that's the wires we want right there. Now you do have the option if you want to, to make it easier to work, you can pinch this grommet and give it a little pull. That'll give you a little bit more excess to make it easier to work with. And you can always push that grommet back in later. We're now gonna cut off some of this sheathing here though. It's got a, like a cloth tape around it. So we're gonna get some of that off. Don't cut any of the wires, just the sheathing. Usually once you make a cut, you can kind of almost unravel this stuff. Just get that out of the way. 
And now we've got all the wires here that we can access to make our connections. All right, so you have five wires here on this driver's side in this harness. The one we do not need is the brown or the blue with the black stripe. Those two separate away. The ones we do need though are the black, the gray with the black stripe, and the black with a white stripe. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the connector here labeled stop. So it says stop on it. It also has an arrow on it. You look there, there's an arrow. The arrow is supposed to point towards the load. That's how these little inductive clamps work. They need to point towards the load. Well, our load in this case is our light. So it should point towards the light assembly. So this simply opens up, your wire fits in the groove, and then you just clamp it back down in there. And the wire should, this should be able to kind of slide on the wire. We're not pinching the wire in any way. We're just fitting it inside of a groove. And the inductive components will pick up when a signal is sent. So we know we're gonna be going towards the light with it. So that means we're gonna have our arrow kind of angled down because it's gonna go down and then into the assembly there. So we're sliding this over our wire and the wire that we're using for our stop circuit is the black wire with the white stripe. So I slid it over that, that'll angle down towards it. That'll take care of that one. Next, we're gonna put on our turn signal wire labeled left turn here, same, it has an arrow. Open this one up, our left turn will go over the black wire. So go ahead and slide that on around the black wire. And then clip it on down. All right, we got one more over here. That is the gray wire with the black stripe. That's gonna be our turn signal for this side. So we're gonna grab the one labeled tail, brown, open that up. That'll slide over our gray wire here with the black stripe. And then we'll click that one together. Now each one of these, there is a foam sticky pad that we're gonna wrap around it, but I recommend holding off on putting that sticky pad on until you've tested out your system and make sure that it works. Uh, especially on these Mercedes, wire colors aren't necessarily as consistent as they could be because of various options and things like that. So it's not uncommon on these Mercedes that we may need to switch it to another wire. So those are the ones that it should be with this particular setup. But again, they're, they're just not very consistent like some of the other manufacturers. All right, so now that we've got that set up, this whole box and everything is gonna end up being hidden here in this compartment. We'll end up hooking our white wire up to a ground over there, but let's, get, let's finish up our clips real fast. So we know most of this is gonna stay over here, so we're gonna put it in there just so we can uh, gauge our wire length and stuff like that appropriately. And then we're gonna grab the other side circuit. Let's go ahead and stretch it out here. It's kind of wound up get all the kinks out of it. This one is labeled right turn and it's green. That one's gonna go over to this side. So I'm gonna get it routed over there. We're gonna get our wires exposed just like we did on this side and then we'll show you which circuit to hook it to. So we went ahead and ran it across the threshold just underneath where that plastic piece is that we took off. We were able to poke it right underneath here and come out over here on the other side. So I've separated these out. The one that we're concerned with is our violet wire with the black stripe. So that's this one here. So I'm just gonna slide that wire into the groove and then click it over. So now we're gonna hook up our ground wire. That's the white wire here with the ring terminal pre-installed on it. There's already a factory ground stud right there. So we're just gonna use that one. We're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the ground stud. And be careful if you're using a gun. You don't wanna zip this off real fast because the nut is actually made on to the wiring. So it's made onto the wiring there. It is supposed to spin, but if you spin that at high speed, it may grab and you could damage your wiring. So just take it slow when zipping that off of there. We'll then slide our ring terminal in place. And I'm gonna put it with the, the crimp portion facing towards the rear of the vehicle. That'll give me a flat surface for our ground component here to go right back on. And then same thing when you're reinstalling this, you don't wanna just zip it on real high speed. And I'll hold it and just go on slow. There we go. And then we'll just, you can finish it off once you get it to where it's 
most of the way run down. And I just like to check, make sure you can't rotate it nice and solid so our ground connection looks good there. All right, what we've got left now is our power connection here. This is the black wire that's poking off that is exposed. We're gonna connect that to the black wire harness that comes in our kit using the included butt connector. So here's the harness that comes in your kit. You get a, you're gonna get a bunch of it here. Here's the one end of it. We're gonna strip it back. And then I'm gonna strip just a little bit more back from this one. It's, it's pretty close, but a little bit more is not gonna hurt it there. We'll now slide on our butt connector and we'll crimp it down. And then on the other side of our butt connector, we'll slide in our harness here and crimp it down. And now these are heat shrink butt connectors. You can shrink it down if you want. This is gonna live inside the vehicle, so it's not really necessary to shrink this one down, but we're gonna go ahead and shrink it down anyway since it came with it. Uh, but if you're gonna be running any wires exterior of the vehicle, you would definitely wanna sh uh, shrink it down with your heat gun to protect it from corrosion. So now at this point, we're gonna take this wire and we're gonna route it up to our power source. There's a fuse box located just underneath the second row rear seat that has a main power wire on it that we can connect to. So that's how we're gonna route it. We're gonna be going up that way towards it. So I'm gonna route it now and then I'll show you the path I took to get it there. So now before I ran the wire, I just pulled it up to the front and I just had an assistant hold it onto the battery real quick so we could run a test to make sure everything was working properly. And it was not working properly. So with this particular vehicle, we do not wanna hook it up per the instructions that you'll receive with it. Uh, this vehicle sending current down multiple wires during braking and turn signal operations. So the dedicated wire that it has for those are not being picked up appropriately. So the way that it needs to go, we still had the brown wire hooked up, right? Or the brown one here labeled tail, that, that's fine. But the one that was labeled stop that we had placed on the black wire with the white stripe, remove that, you're not gonna use that at all. So just take that off and you can just bundle it up here with your module. Then we're gonna take the left turn signal and we're gonna hook that up to the black wire with the white stripe, which is actually your stop circuit. But when you turn a turn signal on, it also receives a signal along with the turn signal wire and the feedback wire. Uh, so that confuses the module. So if you leave it here on the stop circuit, it'll, it'll work as it needs to. Then over on the other side, the single wire that we hooked on over there, over here, we're gonna move from the violet wire and place it on the green wire with the black stripe. That's the stoplight circuit on this side, but uh, even though it's labeled turn, we need to hook it to the stoplight to make our four pole function properly. I've already tested it and it worked out this way. So now that we got the correct wires, I'm gonna go ahead and continue routing that wire and then we'll show you the path we took. So from the compartment in the back, we just simply poked the wire down the side here and we just took our tool, our trim tool, and we just poked it underneath the paneling. Just keep going forward. Keep poking it under all the way down. You'll get to this plastic trim piece. We continued poking it down. You can see just a little bit of the wire right here. We're gonna put that under the carpet. This piece actually lifts up a little bit so you can poke that under more easily. Route it across. That panel will lift off there if you raise your seats up. And then we poked the wire in here and then I just ran it around the sides until it came out on this side because that's where our positive terminal is over there. So we got a bunch of excess here that we don't need. This is hot all the time right there, so we can trim off some of this excess. We're just gonna trim it off, maybe over to here, something like this. That way we've got a little bit there excess for the future if we need it and stuff like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hook up our fuse harness first, and then we'll connect everything together. So the fuse harness that you got here is gonna have the wires pre-stripped for you. So you can just peel those off of there. One end of this fuse harness is gonna get a ring terminal. So take the ring terminal in your kit, slide it on there and crimp it down. The other end of our fuse harness will connect to the butt connector. So we can go ahead and put that on there. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and strip this back and attach it. I guess we might as well. Uh, the main thing is, is that you do not insert your fuse for your harness yet. That way, minimizes your chances of causing a short when you're working here. So we strip that end back, slide it on there, and then we'll crimp this down. All right, we've got our connections made. We will go back and shrink down that butt connector, but let's finish up our connections here. So the post that we want to remove, 
is located down here. So we'll be zipping that off, sliding our ring terminal in place, and then putting it back similar to our ground stud. So now we're gonna remove this with a 13 millimeter socket. I'm gonna hold the wire because we wanna be in control of this circuit as we're taking it off of there. It is also kind of was crimped around the nut there. So the nut kind of wants to stay. We can go ahead and pull that off. We're gonna move this out of our way briefly, slide our ring terminal onto that stud. It can be a little tricky because it's so tight in here. And then we'll just put that back in place and tighten it down. All right, we've got our connection made there. So at this point, before we insert our fuse, we're gonna go back and clean everything up. So we'll shrink down our butt connector. All the wiring we have in the back, we're gonna cable tie up any of the excess stuff to make it nice and neat. And then we've also got these foam pads here that we're gonna wrap around all the connectors as well as mount up the module. All right, so we've gone ahead and cleaned everything up. We reinstalled all of our panels in reverse order of removal, mounted up our module with the sticky pad and stuff. The main four pole connector that was attached to the module over there, we actually just routed it right underneath the carpet here. If you just pull back, you can poke it right underneath this beam and it'll come out here in the center. This is where your harness is gonna live. This is designed to live inside the vehicle to protect it from the elements. When you wanna use it, you simply drape it out the back like that. We'll go ahead and close our lift gate. Just make sure you avoid the striker here at the middle and everything else won't damage your wiring. It's just that one spot. We can then grab our four pole wiring and we're gonna plug it into our tester. You can plug it into your trailer at home to test it out, but I highly recommend a tester like this because if you have any faults on your trailer with its wiring, you can get inaccurate readings making you think that there's an issue with your wiring when it's actually your trailer. So I'm gonna jump in it now and turn it on so I can get the rest of our lights to work. Your tail lights likely will come on like this if you just shut your lift gate, that's normal for the tail lights to come on. But for turn and stop signals, we will need to start the vehicle. So I'm gonna go get in it now and fire it up and then you guys can check out our lights back here and make sure that they are all working properly. Now once you first get in the vehicle, you will need to do a learn procedure. So go ahead and turn your tail lights on. You can turn them off, then run your turn signals. After you run those, you can hit your brake. That should program it. And at this point, all of our signals should be working properly. So we're gonna turn on our tail lights. You should see those there. With our tail lights on, you should see the left signal blinking. Now you should see the right signal blinking. And then if I hit the brakes, they should all be lit up. And that completes our installation of Taconcha's ZCI four pole flat trailer connector wiring harness on our 2017 Mercedes GLS 450.